weekly video is going to be about um, the top excuses people use why they can't do yoga. I hear these all the time, so I just wanted to address them. And today we get props. So let's go ahead. This is going to be, I think we're going to do the top four excuses that I hear over and over again. Okay. Um, if you can't read this, then uh, don't adjust your screen. My writing just sucks. So sorry about that. Okay. Here we go. Let's start off with some pink here. We are going to do number four. We're going to go from the top down. So it's kind of, you know, building a little dramatic, ex a little like suspense or something. Just joking. Such a dork. Okay. So the one reason or one excuse that people give is that they don't have enough time or money. No time or money. Okay, I'm not looking at your bank statements. You very well might not have enough money. I'm not looking at your calendar. You very well might not have enough time. But what I can tell you is this, is that once you start a normal yoga practice, that this stuff kind of falls into place for you. So here's what I mean. Um, if you don't have enough time and you're constantly busy and you're always doing something and you're running from place to place and you're like, there's no way I could fit 60 minutes for myself in there. I've got the kids. I've got soccer practice. I've got school. I've got work. I've got husbands. I've got you know, all this stuff. So one thing that I can tell you is once you start a regular yoga, yoga practice, you actually become a little bit more productive, meaning... Um, what I find is that when I'm off my practice, I'm spending more time doing, doing things, um, redoing them, my mind isn't in it, I'm jumping around. But once I actually take the time on a regular basis to just sit and breathe for myself and um, to feel good, I actually have better relationships with people. I feel more productive. I'm more efficient at what I do. And my life kind of starts to snap back into place. The more that I come to my mat, the more time I seem to find, meaning... Um, you know, I start to organize better. My mind is clear. It's not as cloudy. I'm not sitting there spending a half an hour doing bills when I could be doing 10 minutes, but I keep daydreaming because of it. So the whole time thing, um, I can't give you more hours in the day, but what I can tell you is that yoga actually does help you to organize your life better, to become more efficient as a human being. Um, and with the money thing, it's kind of similar. Uh, yes, it's very, um, it can be expensive to do yoga. And what I find from so many people, and myself included, is that you start to find healthier habits, which, um, you know, you start to go for a walk instead of going out to the bar. You start to eat at home a lot more and cook a lot more instead of going out to restaurants. As you become more and more healthy, what seems to happen is that your expenses do seem to go down. And I know that doesn't sound, I know healthy, everyone's always like, healthy eating is so expensive. In reality, um, it's not. You start to care less about things. You start to do more about, you know, gardening at home or something like that. And I'm not saying everybody will, but um, I know a lot of people who have started yoga and kicked a smoking habit because they started to feel really crummy in their bodies every time they would smoke. And that awareness that yoga brings, um, it just helps you to, it helps you to kind of quit some of your bad, your bad habits, which could be very expensive. So um, another thing that kind of relates to both of these is I get a lot that people are like, well, I can just do yoga practice at home. I can just find it online. Absolutely. If you have the motivation to do that, by all means, absolutely. They're like, it'll fit into my life a little bit better. I don't have to go somewhere to, on someone else's schedule. It's not as expensive. Yes, absolutely. However, what I found is that it's really, really hard to work out on your own. Um, myself, as well as countless other people that have told me this, that um, when you're at home, you're seeing the dishes in the sink, your phone is ringing, there's kids going, there's something else you should be doing. You're not in that moment. If you can take those 60 minutes and just set them aside, um, that's when the practice really comes in. It's really hard to do a yoga practice in the middle of your everyday life. When there's all these other stressors, everything that's causing you stress, you haven't removed yourself from it. So you can't practice coming away from it, like coming down from it. Um, so, you know, it, it all seems to work itself out. Um, if I were you, I would just give it a try and just see if you can if you can figure out a way to make it work and just do it for 30 days, do it for 60 days. See if it makes a change in your life and if you start to find you have more time and you have more money um, by coming to your mat because I hear that all the time and I know it's hard to believe, so try it for yourself. Um, let's see. The top third reason why people don't want to do yoga is... 
I'm going. Whoops, that's not how you spell going. I don't know where that T came from. To look silly. I get a lot of people who um, are nervous to come because they're afraid they're going to look silly. They're not. Um, they don't know the postures. They're scared to put their head over their foot, whatever. Let me just give you this um, little secret, this little kind of disclaimer. We all look silly when we're doing yoga. We all fall. We laugh about it. We get back up. Um, nobody can look beautiful when you're kind of sticking your foot over your head or anything like that. So don't worry about looking silly. The room is dark. Um, everyone here is here to explore. So if you're a brand new person, you might be exploring certain postures. And if you're an experienced yogi, you might be exploring something else. But we never, ever want to get to the point that we feel like we've got a posture or that we're perfect at a posture because as soon as you do that, you stop growing. So what we encourage is if you can do this part of the posture, now add a bind, now lift a leg, now do this. We're constantly encouraging people to go further so that they, they do things that they're unfamiliar with so that they can grow and so that they can change. And um, in that sense, everybody's a beginner. Every single time you come to your mat, you are brand new because you're exploring something different in a posture. You may have done warrior B a gazillion times. And so maybe we throw in that you lift a heel or, um, you know, that we add in some sort of a bind on it. There's something always that you can amp up to. That being said, there's always somewhere that you can step it down. You can put a knee down. You can put a hand down. So if you're worried about looking silly, we all look silly and we just own it. So... <laughs> Just come on in and give it a try. You'll see that there is no, we don't do the whole yoga journal cover model type of yoga here. We're dirty, we're nasty, we're sweaty, um, we're breathing hard, but it's dark and it's loud and you can just get lost in here exploring and playing. So um, if that's your excuse, you don't want to look silly, well, we all do. So you will look silly, <laughs> but we expect it. All right, number two. Um... <laughs> this one I get a lot. I can't do the, I don't know what I was starting to write there, but that was not it. I don't do heat. One word, one word for that. Duh. None of us can do heat. Um, it's something that your body has to work up to. You have to build up to it. If you've never worked out in heat before, why would you expect that you could work out in heat immediately? There's a, there's a period of time that your body has to get acclimated to it. Um, it's kind of like working out in altitude where people go up, you know, go up to Colorado or something to practice training for whatever sport that they do so that their body can become more efficient because it can start to do it at low oxygen levels. Well, the heat is very similar. Um, we'll do a whole thing on the heat, but for the most part, just so, just for right now, so I don't go on too long, the heat is something your body has to acclimate to. And it could take, you know, two, three weeks of coming into classes in the heat and your heart is beating and you're breathing really heavy and, it's, and the heat is all you can think about. And that's normal. That's totally normal. It's not you that you can't do the heat. It's that you've never given your body a chance to acclimate. Once you acclimate to the heat, then there are studies upon studies that are proven athletics or um, athletes are actually more efficient and they produce better results in non-heat as well as heat-related environments. Um, there's also a lot of studies that have been done that show that it increases your sweat response, which is a really healthy thing to sweat quickly um, as soon as a stressor kind of comes into your environment to get the detox, to get the toxins out, to get... Um, you know, just to cool down your body, to regulate all your systems. So you're actually training your body, not just in the yoga poses, you're training your body when you come into the heat and you work out. So if your excuse is that you can't do the heat, just know you are with millions of other people. Their bodies are not acclimated to it, and that's okay. We don't, you know, we're not kind of militant when you come in here saying you must do this, you must do this. It's all about take care of yourself. And if you're on the stage where you are still acclimating your body to the heat, come down to child's pose. Walk out of the, heck, even if you're acclimated to the heat, walk out of the room if you need to. There's no judgments here. This is about your journey, your experience, and your exploration. So maybe one day the heat isn't a big deal to you and you rock out the postures. And the very next day, maybe the heat is just killing you and you just have to sit on your mat and breathe. And both of them are completely okay. 
So the whole, I can't do heat, it's not really an excuse. It's, of course you can't do the heat. Nobody can, not at first. It's something you have to work towards. You, you wouldn't pick up a basketball and consistently shoot three-pointers without ever training for it, right? You gotta learn, your body has to learn how to react to that and it makes your body more efficient. So that is not a good excuse. That one won't fly with me. Um, let's see what color haven't we used. Oh, let's do this one. Number one reason why people don't come to yoga is I can't touch. Told you. My writing sucks. Sorry. My toes. I should have rethought this. I can't touch my toes. That's why people don't come to yoga, because they can't touch their toes. Guess what? We don't flip and care if you can touch your toes. That is not a prerequisite for yoga. In fact, that may or may not be a benefit of yoga if you do it year upon year upon year. For some people, your body, the way that the bones actually connect, you just can't, you'll never touch your toes. For some people, that's the way that they're built. Guess what? It doesn't affect your yoga practice in the least bit. Yoga is not about being flexible. Yoga is about awareness it's about what are you feeling on your way down to that forward fold? Are you thinking about what you're, what you're doing for dinner tonight? Or are you thinking about the way that your hamstrings are stretching? Are you paying attention to the messages that your body is giving you? Or are you daydreaming and you're jumping into the future or into the past or something like that? So keep in mind, um, flexibility, strength, that all comes with a practice. I'm not saying you'll ever be able to touch your toes, but, but that all comes with a practice, but it's a byproduct. It's a byproduct of yoga. It's not the main goal. The main goal of yoga, although it's very personal and changes from person to person, the general kind of concept is that yoga is a mental practice. It's teaching your brain to be in that moment, to not run away, to not go into that fight or flight that we always go into. Yoga is about finding your conscious choice that you're gonna to choose to lower down and you're gonna lower down super slow. You're not just gonna flap down. Um, and by coming to your mat, this whole touching your toes, I don't even know how that got started. The only reason why yogis are like, you know, twisting themselves all up is only because they're so flexible from doing this for so long. They don't feel anything until they take it to that next step. So just know that that if you see somebody, you know, twisting into a pretzel or whatever, it's not that they're trying to show off or they're trying to make you feel bad about where you're at. It's that this practice is so much about feeling and about sensation. And when you stretch yourself out a little too much, you got to go a little deeper before you feel anything. So these are pretty much the top excuses that cover a lot. Um, I don't have time or money. That might be very true. Um, however, it does help with budgeting. It does help with efficiency in your life and your relationships. I'm going to look silly. We all do. I can't do the heat. Duh. Of course you can't do the heat. I can't touch my toes. Nobody cares. So get those out of your repertoire and come on in, try a class, um, and just give it a chance. Give it a chance. There's a reason why this practice has been around for so many years, thousands upon thousands of years. So give it a chance and see what you think. Have a great day.